Sweat Equity Podcast and Streaming Show, the number one comedy business, business comedy podcast in the world. Perfect. Some people call me cool, Eric. Business podcast of the year. We got to give it. Uh, our Some I- people call me cool, Eric. R.I.P. Louis Anderson, who's in our intro. Oh, no. I forgot. Yeah, I know. Bummer City. Uh, pragmatic entrepreneurial advice of real raw dog talk. That's what we're all about because we're 2020's best small, medium enterprise business advisory podcast in the United States. 2021's best podcast and streaming entertainment studio, Eastern United States Media Innovator Awards. And. 20, did we win 2022 already? We won 2021's Lux Life oh, we Global won. Excellence Award. That just went live. Global. Global Excellence. That was Best Small Business Podcast. And then uh, Corporate Livewire was Business Podcast of the Year. Well, call us Pitbull. Throw it on the pile. Call us some Pitbulls because we're Mr. Worldwide. What? <laughs> uh, listen to us on iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Samsung Podcast. Yeah, that's a new one. We're on Google Play. Yeah, that's a real thing. You're making these up. I swear to God. Uh, it, it goes right on your Samsung phone nowadays. Uh, we have our guest, my former roommate, TV show producer of uh, Guy's Grocery Games mm. and host of the Table 5 Podcast. Is it a love L- connection? You'll have to find Lindsay out. Lindsay Luttrell. Negative. Uh, she's got a boyfriend anyway. She mentions that. I already said it wasn't. Uh, this episode sponsored by. Did you come in? <laughs> your uh, get your gut biome tested by Viome. Viome's gut intelligence test supplements. Link for your health insights. <laughs> <Just> flapped up. <laughs> well, you made me laugh. 70 percent off if you use the link in the episode description for your health insights. Personalized food recommendations and precision supplements formulated for you. Get get to know your flora and fauna and then work on yourself. We're trying to be better in 2022, yes? Start digging around in your poop. Yeah, send them your poop. Send them a little thing of blood. They're going to tell you who you are on the inside so you can be better on the outside. Oh. Oh, see what I did? I didn't yes. know where I was going with that. Let's get this party started, hotty toddy. What about my sweat equity? Sweat equity. Sweat equity. My sweat equity. My sweat equity. My sweat equity. What about my sweat equity? Can you hear me? Oh yeah. We got you. And we're going. With that. Perfect. That's how, that's how we started. Everybody has to dance. You already beat us to it. Oh, that's how I start everything, Law. I'm for not the, ready to switch the camera that fast for the dancing. Uh, Jeez. Oh, wait. Let's, let's, we'll it, give you a proper you dance again? intro. Ready? Dance. Perfect. <laughs> for those listening, it was fairly white chick dancing. Uh, Most definitely. Think of like your cool aunt at a wedding. Uh, about four white claws in. Uh huh. I think that's fair. I mean, I am a cool aunt to six kids, so I'll go with that. Wow, really taking wow. ownership of that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You are so brave. I've never, I'll own it. I'll own it. I've never heard it, heard it put that way. Where you're, and I'm an aunt to six children. <laughs> I am, and they would tell you I'm the cool one. Yeah, I believe it. Uh, other than you going to Alabama, you know, you're. As cool as can be. Oh, are you guys going to do this? Do I have to be here for this? Well, we were roommates, kind of. I didn't live in the house, Ooh. technically. <laughs> I lived in a two-car garage that had uh, air conditioning and uh, carpeted floors. It was like they gave up halfway to make it an in-law suite. Yeah, it's an yeah. Alabama in-law suite. Had, that's a thing. Of all places, though, this is in the gayest neighborhood in America, West Hollywood. Yes. Oh. A lot of cool gay jokes I got uh, from the comedians yeah. that came over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was My also the only room racing. in the house with air conditioning, so you really were winning. That's true, but uh, I will say women are typically, in my experience, almost always cold. Plus the gr- the cars. You gotta sleep around the cars. Yeah. No cars in the garage were allowed. Oh. It was straight, it was straight it was up. So small. It, had, it had carpeting. I was, uh, I was in between doing stand-up tours and I had nothing going on. No kidding. And I was like, 
hey, what's that two car garage? When I came over to party. Anybody use <laughs> that? Can that, that space? be my house now? Yeah. And then I was I like, I live here now. I'll be security too. No, <laughs> but yeah, that worked. Too. That's how I sold it. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. I had to walk into the house bathroom that was like the entrance into the kitchen <laughs> to take a shower. But I was like, I don't give a shit. Right. You it can't, was, you yeah, can't it was an interesting here. setup. You can't live anywhere in West Hollywood for under like a grand just for a room anywhere. So I was like, yeah. whatever I paid, 500, 700, something like that. That was a steal. Sounds great. Sounds amazing. And we did it without the landlord's knowledge. So we just knocked off. We just divided his rent by three and knocked off our own a little bit. <laughs> Boom. Yeah. So and you then, were the one getting scammed. And, and then you had girls chat. You had another girl to chat with. The fourth girl. Exactly. <laughs> Um, Guys, I'm having a margarita. Well, you're on the job right now. Where are you? You're in Sonoma. <laughs> Way to rat her out. Well, I just finished filming for two weeks up in Sonoma in Santa Rosa, California, Windsor area, and have been making my way down the coast. I always say, I'm going to take the drive slow next time and stop here and stop there and do this and do that. And, and then I never do because I'm like, get me out of here because you're just like so over it at that point. But what is it? What's the production schedule like? You're doing TV, right? Yep. What's that? I'm doing, how is it harder with all the restrictions and everything? Is it taking longer? I was longer? just saying that the other day, my job has this whole new added layer of like clerical admin type duties because everything is around COVID. I have eight chefs fly in a day to come on set to do a show. And so they're coming from all over. The I thought you were going to say for the food. <laughs> I was like, that does not sound cost effective. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, you got to, they have to be tested by a certain time. And then if the test doesn't get back through FedEx or the results don't make it to the lab, and then they have to, you know, then we have to find a replacement. And then if we don't have a replacement, then we have to decide if the episode can only have three or if it can, you know, it's a whole cluster. Huh. So the, there's definitely an added layer of stress to, producing a show now can you say what show you're producing or do you need to keep this or do you have are you is mums the word on this right now craft services is the best no no, no. i can say it. we're in like season 30 something i produce oh. um guys grocery games on food network mm -hmm. yeah and so uh for those not familiar with the premise i guess you fly in chefs i haven't seen it yeah, it's kind of like I used to I used to cast the show before I was on the at the field side where I was like filming it. And it is I would always say it's like supermarket sweep meets chopped oh, because we okay, built out this okay. warehouse to be a grocery store. I mean, it looks like a grocery store. If you walked in and didn't look up to see like all the cameras and lighting and things, you would think you were in a grocery store. Um, so they have they're given a challenge by Guy Fieri. And they have to run through the grocery store, collect their groceries, go cook something in like 20 minutes and then present it. Like it'll be like, give us your best burger, but you have to use these canned chilies. And so they have to go grab that thing of canned chilies and then anything else they want to make a burger. It can be a lamb burger, a chicken burger, a beef burger. And then they all present it to the judges. So they have to be good at shopping too. Is that the deal? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they got to be good at shopping, at cooking, at plating and at selling it to the judges. Well, that, that's chopped. That's the chopped aspect. But yeah. you throw in this other wrinkle that I think we, is giving me, I'm sweating. Or do they race about. around in the, in the shopping carts? Do like they wear Ryan, sweaters? You know, do they all get the batteries first? <laughs> no, and unfortunately, it's not those big butterball like chickens either. That you're, yeah. <laughs> no one used to watch them. You get five them, of those. Yeah, you have to, five's your limit. You can get five. You got to go get the coffee be, uh, ground beans. Why you hammers? Doing, yeah. ha expensive, weird stuff you don't think about. Right, right. And then are, do are we getting it? Keep your eyes peeled on the inflatable PBR can or um, totally. or mayonnaise oh, yeah, jar. Have like a bonus thousand dollar. Yeah, no, they're yeah. just dude. We'd, for the good stuff. we'd probably fucking smoke supermarkets. Oh food. yeah, yeah. I mean, I watched an ungodly amount of that show. Yes. It was always on some, was, and everybody obviously know our stuff. Well, everybody, yeah. when you hear that beep, um, supermarket. They brought it back. I, I heard, I tried to watch it. I Just was out. Yeah. I was out this like immediately. supermarket sweep. They tried oh, to make it too bad. cool. It needs to be corny. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was going to say, you should try and go on it, but if it's not cool, then don't. Well, I'm not very cool by a lot of people's standards, so maybe I am the demo, but, um, you know. We'll train for six months, then we'll do it. Well, 
Look, who's going to, uh, of all the contestants, are they going to beat my 40 time? Probably not. Right. And, and with I'm, your know-how. I'm wiry. Yeah. get up on top of them shelves. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think we got it figured out. He's like a spider monkey. Yeah. I like it. Can you work your magic, maybe? And we'll wear matching sweaters. They don't have right. them anymore, I don't think. Yeah, let me see if I know someone over <laughs> there. Get, get you guys a shot. We're really just doing this interview just to see. Right. We, yeah. We're slow playing you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, we can hang up now. You've got what you uh, need. Okay. This is pretty much it. Casting. Yeah. This is the show. We just, I, we have old friends as guests and then we try to see what we can get out of them. We mooch things off. Got okay. it. Copy. How is the life of a producer? Like what is it just, is it chaos? You kind of work a big glut of months and then you're off. What, how is, I don't know. I, I have a few producer friends, but it's all different depending on the show. Yeah. Well, it's all different. Yeah. All the time. I mean, people are always like, so what do you do? What side? And I'm like, oh, geez. Um, what are the sides? We don't even know that. You know, yeah. there can be, there's reality, there's docu, there's film, there's television, there's scripted, there's non-script, you know, so it's, um, I am typically, if I have what I call like office hours, if I'm just in pre-pro kind of prepping the show and like going over stuff, I have like pretty, nor- I would say normal. I mean, I've never had a nine to five, but First Zoom meetings at 10, last one could be six between 6 and 7 p.m. But then sometime throughout the day, I'm not doing anything necessarily with someone like watching me. I'm just like getting stuff done on my own time. And then filming, those hours are insane. I mean, I went up there for two weeks and I was nonstop. I mean, I just didn't, got there at 7 a.m., didn't leave until the day was over, which could be anywhere between 7 p.m. and 9 p.m. But then I go home and like keep going. Well, I feel like you're a person that thrives in that kind of situation on the filming days. No, I mean, we haven't talked in, I don't know, at least 10 years, probably. I but, know. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, but I feel like knowing what I do know about you, uh, you're, I think you're one of those people that can coordinate on the fly. Is that is that kind of playing to your strengths? Kind yeah. Of you know, someone the other day was like, you clearly thrive in chaos. And I was like, oh, I don't know that I love that that is Knocked the Knocked the drink away. out of their hand. Boom. Yeah. I'm like, I don't know that I love that that's a takeaway or that I necessarily agree because I actually don't enjoy the chaos. It's the chaos of it that I actually wish was not a part of the job. So well, that's what's funny. But I guess I do because I here I am. You may not enjoy it, but you might be good in that situation yeah. where a lot of people freak out. Yeah. Wh- yeah. Can you explain why every time somebody's talking about a, a large scale production, the hours are insane the th- things were nothing went right. I Cost. feel like, right. But how is it not figured out that people can just have a non stressful time with it? It seems like every time the hours are nuts, you know, you got, I don't know. You That's know why I'm asking. I honestly wish I had a better answer for this, but because I do the same thing where I'm like, okay, next season, mm-hmm. I've made a list of all the things that like weren't going the way that I would hope and Mm -hmm. I'm going to, we're going to change it. And I like, think I have this big masterful plan. And then it's just like, because there's so many departments who have to come together to make this one thing. Like every time someone gets on our set, they say to me every time I had no idea how many people it took and how much time it takes to make this. And I'm like, I know, because how could you possibly know? And it's like, you're watching 42 minutes of TV and it, is come together perfectly on your TV. So you're thinking, great, where that took a 14 hour day. And I think it's just because of all the moving parts. I mean, you just can't control any of it. So like if something happens, everyone has to stop down and kind of like figure out how to make that now not happen or how to fix it to move on. And it just takes time. I don't even know the answer, to be honest. Well, I mean, the answer is there's no answer, probably. There's I wonder no if answer. it's because there's a lot of creatives, like everybody... Everybody has to be a little bit creative, your costume design, everything. So, like, there can be that ego sometimes, maybe. I don't know. Well, I, I, oh, hear, yeah. I hear a lot of lamenting in this situation about producers got to get their stank on it. They got to touch it so yeah. they can justify their job. Not necessarily you. It seems like you're in the trenches. But I'm saying, like, the people that... You know, and generally speaking, obviously we don't know how the show's set up. I don't want to have anybody see this interview for some reason and get you in trouble. But like, no, you know, like there's people that aren't on set that are having to make their touches on it. 
or whatever. Animators in Korea. Sure. Yeah. Um, Graphic designers in Albuquerque. Anything. Yeah. uh, That Japan. I have to say, I I wanted to go obscure. Um, That, you know, they have to be able to justify their job as being, you know, a, a producer from from afar or remote or whatever you would call it. Yeah. I luckily we don't have that situation because our, our the the final say big guys are there. Also, I, I was like they're on set with me. I'm still thinking about uh you thriving in chaos. I also think there's an inverse to that where you kind of get bored uh easily with uh redundancy or Oh, I Definitely do. Yeah. I think that's the other way of kind of looking at that too. It's not that you love chaos. You probably handle it better than a lot of people, but I, I, I get a lot of this too, because like I didn't get it till later in life, but it was been reflected back at me that I I'll get bored if it's, it, there's nothing really challenging going on and almost the ADD way in a good way. If that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Do you, 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 well, so, my my mom always laughs like when I come home. I'm from Destin, Florida, as you know. And when I will come home, a day into it, I'll be just be like, "What are we doing today? What's like? Where are we going? What are we doing? Like, let's." And my mom's like, "Um, do you need to? Destin, I don't. I don't know. What so... are you doing today?" Well, there's also like I, I'm. I, I fill the calendar up too. Even if like you don't have anything going on, it'll surprisingly get full, right? Yeah. And I'm. I've always been. It gets just confusing a, though. I never know what's real. <laughs> but uh, personal. Yeah, like, what are you personal. Really doing? He doesn't put anything. Just personal. I have a lot of. I have. A, what like, is that? Seven or eight what's color personal? calendars. You don't get that from me. You have to tell me everything. There's no personal labels. For me, <laughs> I, I'm working on it. I'm working on scaling that down to be. Uh, <laughs> Uh, to allow you in more <laughs> readable by other people that I work with or hang out with. Um, but it's one of those things where, you know, I'm always like, you're only on this blue marble for so long. And, uh, for the most part, I'll try to, f- I'll feel like a bag of shit. If I didn't do anything, you know, somewhat productive, I'll have my lazy days. Like, a, I've had this kind of week, but like, you know, I'll get so guilty about not doing stuff. Is that kind of the same thing or. Yeah, I do. I, I remember like when I had roommates, like back in the day, like my friends would be like, why can you not just chill out? But I'm like, I'm up with the sun. I'm out the door. I'm on, I'm doing something. And then I don't, I grew up that way. My dad was like that. He did not, he doesn't chill. Like he would, he wakes up at four, four thirty. He, mm. you know, he has a slow morning and he's not doing much, but it's like, he's up. Oh man. That's and what, that's what tell him to does. call me up. Yeah. They can we'll have talk. bro chat. You do that every morning. Yeah. I'm the same way though. Slow morning, like just yeah. get get the little things done that nobody wants to bother with me while I'm doing it. So I'll that's how he is. Time. He's like, yeah. I mean, he had four kid has four kids. I mean, I'm saying like growing up, there was four kids in the house, yeah. a wife, you know, had a job. So he's like, if I want to wake up and have a moment of like my own thought process and exactly. enjoy a cup of coffee, watch the news, I got to do that before anyone else is stirring. Your dad gets it. The way Eric yeah, pitched he still it. Does that. Exactly what, what, how I justify it, too. The best pitch Eric gave for that, and I, I did it for like a month, and it was I got more shit done in that month than I've ever done, I think, because uh, the way you pitched it, that really sold it. I mean, we talked about it for probably years on this show, but it was like uh, no one takes your mornings away. And so getting up early, there's no one up. You can't really call anybody except your dad. Mm-hmm. And then um, – <laughs> Yeah, his, his, his number. Yeah. And then like, I'll see him at the meetings. It, it's the same thing as like, uh, when I'm on a plane, I usually would like, I used to have to fly from Tampa to LA a lot and I get yeah. more done on the plane because I'm like, well, what else fuck else am I going to do? Right. No curveballs. Right. I just answer emails. And when I landed, they would just go out yeah. and I'd look right. like a maniac. But, uh, I don't know. I think there's something to be said. I think, Lindsay and I probably need to go back to something like that, or at least I do. Uh, but what I'll do is if I feel like shit's getting chaotic, I'll, I'll almost be punitive of myself and make myself wake up at, you wake up at four, but four thirties is about as early as I'm going to go. Uh, four thirties a little, that's a little too much for me, but I do like to be up by seven. Yeah. And well, I don't, I, in, this industry doesn't get going to, I mean, if we're not filming, if it's like pre-production, like no one's, mo- no one's asking to talk to you before 10. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So like, I have a lot of time to like go on a walk, have a coffee, like do something for myself. 
Yeah. Also, I, I'm not good, and I don't want to talk to really anybody. Like right. The first nobody hour. knows what a grump I am in the morning. Right. But you're so when do you like actually? Night. If you wake up at four, when do you allow your day to be open to the public? Um, I usually uh, have when the do velvet you, rope do you open. Uh, I don't know, like I wake the kids up when I have the kids to take them to school at like six forty-five. Okay. So. So you get a solid like two, two and yeah. a half typically. Get your work solid in. two and a half. Yeah. Treadmill. Do some all that baiting. stuff. Yeah. Guy stuff. Okay. Like that. Man, the guy stuff. I do think also it changes. You just said you have kids. I don't have kids, so I like. Right. You know, I think if I were to have if I were to have kids, I would have to change my seven a.m. to a little bit earlier, obviously, to have a little more alone time. But again, I think you'd be a great mama because of that being able to thrive in chaos kind of thing. <laughs> or adapt, you know. Yeah, adaptability. Hey. Well, yeah. that's part. Of, that's probably a lot of your job too is adapting. Uh, you know, in dealing with creatives or people that are headstrong. A baby doesn't. You don't really have a lot of negotiating with a baby. Right. Yeah, there's a lot of personalities and a lot of um I was actually just saying that too. Like I I head I I head up a team and there's a lot of managing of personalities with that too, where I'm like, oh, I wasn't expecting that to be such a part of my job. Yeah. Um, but yeah. it is, which is fine. Well, we said the, the big we said a lot on the show, the biggest thing in business is managing the very the big variables people. In a lot of ways, oh, yeah. trying to hire people is, is expensive and, and tough, like tough to really, really get a well, read on people. It's like you can have the whole other non people side, you can have that down to a T, it can be bulletproof, it right. works perfectly. And then if the people suck, it doesn't, it doesn't matter yeah, and, at all. And you're not getting a lot of people that are the similar group, right? So it's not like you're getting a, 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 like a barracks of uh, army guys, you're getting like. <laughs> Just a bunch of random people that are coming, coming together on the production yeah. side and the on film on screen side, right? So yeah, totally. So, so yeah, they're not doing personality testing to make sure you guys are are all compatible before you uh, go out there, do you? Yeah, I never really thought about that until now. No, like, there's just a, I suck. a weird amount of people. I I'm used to it from comedy. Like had like really weird crowds over the weekend, and it's like. Oh, well, this is what makes comedy really fun because I'm going to be like, oh, you two are lesbians that this happened Sunday night. <laughs> you two are lesbians that used to be into dick and now you met on MySpace 15 years ago and you kept in touch. I have to find out about this. I need to know yeah, more. You must know more. And talk to them for a good, you know, solid five minutes about mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Yeah, because I'm like, how'd you flip teams? That. All that stuff. But that, then I'm, but I, then I'm done. When I'm off stage, I just, uh, if I, I'm surprised if remembered it right now, like I'm on right. to the next thing, you still have to be there with them, presumably for two weeks at a time or 14 hour days and stuff like that. Yeah. What, what about the COVID uh, aspect of it? Is it, I mean, you kind of touched on it, but it, everybody you're in California. So it's more restrictive in a lot of ways. You're not in LA. So it's not super duper. I don't think. Yeah. It's very much just like, follow the guidelines of like of that County. And then also on top of that, it's like, and then, Hey guys, try not to go, you know, have big group dinners and try not to go do this because if we're down, like if we're down somebody that total, that's one of those things that can cause the day to be longer when you lose somebody because they've tested positive, you have to keep testing them until they test negative, And then you've lost a body that has a job to do on set. Well, um, I don't want to, I don't want to lose focus of why we wanted to have you on. Uh, we could talk to you about TV production for a while, but tell us about the podcast Table Five. Is Table Five, not Table Four Five, right? It's Table Five. Okay, tell, how what's how did the name come about? Because there's so a the name. I think you got to put actually, your name in the title, by the way, because there's a couple Table Fives out there. When I was uh, looking for the link, no. Well, so I never wanted my name in the title, and I'm realizing that I does maybe I need to put it up that way. Like maybe I can call it Table Five and all that, but like on the platforms, maybe I need to add my name, and but shorthand definitely. people will call it table five. We did the same thing. We didn't have our name in the title. And then we, we realized people were searching for our names. If it's, you know, an arm's length of us kind of thing. Oh, interesting. So, uh, or there's a lot of sweat equities that were out there. Not anymore. That Eric put the, the kibosh on intellectual property wise. We own the trademark. So. Oh, cool. Well, I did see when I was listening to your podcast that it oh. does have your name. Hey. 
the, the yeah, rare, yeah, it does. The rare guests that actually listen to it before uh-huh. coming on. Oh, of course. You have to do your homework. That's the producer brain. Yeah, well, you'd, you'd think. The same way Law <laughs> knew the name of yours, yeah. for sure. No, How many uh, numbers were in it? Ta- table 45? Ta- no, it was it Table 4 or 5, like, like John uh, Right, you still Favreau's, don't know the name. You still don't know uh, the IFC name. Show. You know, I also had never known no about John Favreau's, and someone mentioned that, and I was like, <clears throat> but... I mean, that was like um, a podcast on IFC, essentially. He just had five interesting people in, like several cameras at good angles to get everybody and they had good combo and it was, yeah, it was it's such a great concept. So you're, you're interviewing chefs and restaurant tours. I didn't know this is a big love of yours. Uh, I mean, maybe you were, you're holding it back a little bit, but why do you want to talk to, why didn't you cook for me? Yeah. Why didn't, yeah. What the hell? I think it came from, so I mean, I've always loved food and, going out to dinner. And obviously when I moved to LA, I was right out of college, so young and had no, I I mean, that just like opened up to all the places you could go, all the food you could try. I'd never had so many different types of cuisine before. Um, So I've always been into food. And then I moved to New York for a couple of years and was actually managing. I was a hostess and then started managing a restaurant in New York um, called the Odeon in Tribeca. And there I learned, like, I became fascinated with the way the owners, like, ran that restaurant. I learned such insane restaurant etiquette, just about, like, don't take someone's plate when someone else is still eating. Just little things like that, that that happens at restaurants all over. But there it did not, because that makes the person who's still eating feel weird. And, like, just little things that I just was fascinated by the restaurant industry. And they would do wine pairings with the special before service. The, The server could actually say, you should have this with this wine. And blah, 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 blah. Um, and so I loved that and ended up really kind of falling in love with the restaurant industry when I was in New York. And when I was managing that restaurant, there was this cute little round banquet like table in the corner of the restaurant that you could see. I could sit there for my manager meal at night, like when the restaurant would be kind of like slowing down and I could see the front door still, I could see the bar and I could see the entire restaurant. And I would go sit at that table and I would wait until people got up from it. Cause I just loved it. And it was table five. Ah, okay. there's the name. The well, ma- um, mafia style too. Right. You had your back to the wall. <laughs> yeah. So you and you, sneaking up on you. You had all the entry yeah. points and exit points. Yeah, totally. Um, so that's the name. And then when I started working in food TV, I would meet really incredible chefs and some I had heard of some I hadn't, but then I'd get to know them through the show or through work or whatever. And I'd go try their restaurants. And then I just realized I'm interviewing them all the time. But when you interview a chef on our shows, you're getting the process of what they just made. So like if they made a, you know, a crawfish etouffee, like I'm like, okay, tell me how you made your roux. Why is a roux important? Okay. And now you're going to saute the crawfish. I'm getting like, and I need you to repeat the question and the answer, please. Yeah. 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 And like say it in complete sentence and talk in present. For editing. Play this. (laughs) You know, so I wanted to talk to them about more, just kind of like, I mean, I just love talking to people in general. Like, I mean, I'm a conversationalist and I enjoy it. I want to know where you come from, why you think that way, what do your parents do? Like, you are that status, why, like, what makes you tick? I love that kind of stuff. You are that good Um, friend you could take out to a bar and you're just like, I'm not, I'm not, I don't usually go out of my way to talk to a lot of people at a bar or something, but you, you need the friend like you. That will will just open up a conversation with anybody 100%, on the street. I love it. <laughs> mm-hmm. So what makes I would you, always do that. What makes you fascinated with, I guess, the human condition meets restaurant tours and chefs? What they're I all kind of crazy, right? Yeah, I mean, maybe, maybe not. I think it's more just like the that is the the world that I'm in right now. So it's a little exciting, and also I just love that industry. I mean, if I when I was a, you know, booking talent and like doing talent producing stuff, I had my, my world was celebrities. Maybe I would have been like, Oh, I'm going to interview celebrities, but my world right now is chefs. And it's a fascination of mine anyways. And like, I just like knowing how people learn. I don't cook. I mean, I think I can, if I have a recipe and I try, but it doesn't come naturally to me. And I, I have always wanted it to. My boyfriend used to be a chef and he wor- like worked in restaurants and he can just whip up anything at any time. And I'm so envious of that. So I think just chefs in general, just that, that life I enjoy. Yeah. I feel like, um, 
I, I feel like a lot of the famous chefs are kind of like a lot of famous comics. Like they can break down comedy and show you how a joke works and stuff like that, but totally. you don't really want to. Uh, it kind of takes the magic of it away sometimes. Uh, or at least the good Are stuff. Are all chefs supposed to be crazy? I've never, I've never heard that. I've heard, I've I've heard that as a persona, like in general, like not. Yeah, you know, I think all it's of one them. of those like you know stereotypes that can, most people would say is a common misconception, and some people would be like, "Hell yeah!" You know, it's like right. anything. Where do you sit on that? I actually, to be honest, I don't know. I don't. I haven't met a chef that I would say oh, name yeah, names. Man. Do it. Super crazy. I mean, I've worked I, when I was in the restaurant industry. I had a chef at one point who I was like, whoa, like you, something is up. Like he just was not, I don't know. Like I, you could tell he just like maybe didn't like his job. And so mm-hmm. I found him crazy in that sense because I was like, why are you here every day being miserable? Like I don't understand. Oh, well, I mean. Crazy for not liking his job is not the kind of crazy. Exactly. We so I don't that. know the crazy stereotype. I think Like think you're afraid when he's chopping carrots. <laughs> crazy. Like should he, he shouldn't be allowed to have that knife. I think Crazy. working in front of a, like of open flame or just it's hot as shit in there all the time. Right, and, sure, like, yeah. You rarely get a break. Right, yeah. You know? Yeah. Another Especially situation like, where it's always crazy, chaotic, yeah. Well, it's, but I think that like people always want to make chefs like in the same category as like that stereotypical like rock stars. Like rock stars go and they they you know mess up their hotel rooms and they leave it a a mess and then they're like, you know, on drugs and alcohol and whatever and like is that always the case i i doubt it i don't know yeah is uh ed sheeran doing that i don't think so <laughs> so i i <laughs> personally can say i don't know the, <laughs> the crazy chef stereotype i have not met it myself but no, i don't know I, I feel like it's a certain ocd i i think the rock star comparison in my head always goes to like musicians are they're very particular about them playing music and how they do it and their their process for that I think yeah. being a chef's all process oriented, but there's an actual like, there's more of a professional like track for them, for lack of a better kind of way to explain it. Like, yeah, you, you got to work your way up, and you there's got a demand. There's a demand, and but you also have to work your way up. You you don't just start out as being a, a virtuoso. Like there is right. a chain of command kind of thing. Sure. Um, well, uh, all right, we're we're gonna keep this because we know you're on set. And you got to finish your cocktail. We ask everybody their first time on the show. Uh, what advice would you give your thirteen-year-old self? Yeah, I, I thought about that when um, I want to say. I, to be fair, I gave her a heads up because she said she was so slammed, and I felt bad catching her. Well, off your guard. heads up came about like five minutes ago, so it wasn't a true heads up, and I appreciate that actually. So don't better than most. <laughs> I like it. Um, I think I would maybe say something because even at 13, I think I was, I, it was in my head, like timeline, like doing things when everyone else was doing things. I think I would maybe say to myself, like no one else's timeline matters, but yours kind of thing. Like I, I was always slow to like do all the the things. Like I just, I didn't like, I remember like being like upset that I hadn't had my first kiss yet. And I thought that I was like the biggest loser or like, no one was going to, like, it's never going to happen now. And I was like, you <laughs> met that guy in the garage. <laughs> no. And then I met Law Smith yeah. in West Hollywood, California. And turned gay for a minute. And then <laughs> now back with a dude. Uh, yeah, I think I would maybe say timeline. And I, I think that advice would stay with me throughout. I mean, even now, it's like. Yeah, that that's so- your own timeline. That social pressure of think and like adults do this a lot too. A, a, a surprising amount of adults we're friends with, they think everybody's thinking about their shit. Yeah, no nobody one, cares. No one's nobody cares. They're thinking about their own shit. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, we we hear a lot of radio noise, or like something to that degree. Like I wish I was just. Uh, okay. Everybody's looking at me. Nobody right. cares. Right. Except at the middle Mine's school dance worse. when I couldn't hide a boner. That was bad. Mine's oh, yeah. everybody saw that. Yeah. Yeah. That was bad. You know, don't wear umbros to a middle school dance. Yeah. That's what I'm going <laughs> to tell my son. <laughs> umbros. I haven't heard that word in so long. <laughs> well, we're a 90s reference machine over here. Yeah. Um, we are. We're going to go put on our hypercolor t shirts and play Bop It as soon as we get off of this. Oh, my gosh. Bop uh, It. <laughs> um, so where can people find it? It's on uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. We'll put the it's link. It's on Apple, Spotify, Public Radio. I think it's wherever you get your podcasts. Ooh, 
and you said it with the, the affect. I like it. Mm. Well, good to catch up and good to have you on and uh, onward and upward with the podcast. When's, Thank you so much for having do, me on. When do episodes come out? Every month? So right now they're monthly. I'm hoping to get to the point where I can do like two a month. But as you know, with work being so crazy and a podcast takes time. Depends on the show, you know. Yeah. Uh, depends how you want to do it. If you want to make it probably high, high produced like yours, I'm assuming. I didn't get to listen to it yet. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you, you were a uh, perfectionist on it. Yeah, I'm a little bit of a perfectionist. Oh, but... you can't be a perfectionist. Yeah, oh, people, people want the... You watched our show, right? <laughs> well, you, don't, you don't have to use us as a template necessarily, but but I mean, like people want... doing it. They want warts and all. They want the authentic conversation. Yeah. That's why we keep in that just the first couple of minutes of us just bumbling through. My point is don't let it stop you. Yeah. Yeah, no, perfect. for sure. I, I've gotten... I've definitely let go of some things throughout the process. But um, yeah, it's fun. I'm hoping to do a couple of months and... Maybe eventually I'll be doing them weekly. Who knows? But right now, the next one will be first week in February. All right. Well, don't hesitate to hit us up. No, almost no one takes us up on that, but we're happy to help if you need like any help that we might know. So, uh, well, thank you so much. All right, girlfriend. See you later. Thanks for having me.